All right, I got rid of him. That RS3 thought diesels were better than steam engines. And what is that? Sup? Ah, what is that thing? I don't know what it is. What is please save me? Ah! Hello, everybody. My name is Jack. And yesterday, I went to the post office, and they had this here for me. It's a Lionel box. If you look at the edge, on this end, Pennsylvania Heritage SD70 ACE diesel locomotive. I bought it. I talked about it in my last video, my layout update, and I did end up buying it. It's a great engine. I have been testing it since I got it, but I put it back in the box to show you how it's boxed in case you've never gotten one before and you're just curious about it. Doesn't really exist in real life, I don't think. But it just looks so good, I decided to get it anyway, because I... There is a Norfolk Southern Pennsylvania Heritage engine, but it has a different paint scheme. Instead of this black and gold, instead it has the brown and gold that a lot more engines had, but I prefer the GG1's green and gold paint scheme, and this is supposed to be like that. And at first I thought it was green, but once I got it here I realized it was black, but I think it looks even better than it did in those pictures it looked like green. Normally, there's also these in between the frame and the trucks, but I couldn't figure out exactly how to get them back in. Here it is, out of the box with everything it comes with. It includes the engine, of course, the owner's manual because it gets pretty complicated when you're running Legacy or TMCC. And in this bag, there's a bottle of smoke fluid, four traction tires, and a plastic overlay to put over the number buttons on a TMCC remote to help you memorize the controls. And in this little plastic pouch, there is the programming chip for the Legacy remote, and it is labeled. On the front of the engine, Mounted to the pilot is a plow. Coming out of the plow are some MU hoses, three on each side. They're separately applied and made of rubber. And then it has a separately applied rubber brake hose. Right here is the front electrocoupler. And the only way to open it is with an electrocoupler control, either on a TMCC or Legacy remote. Here's the ditch lights. When you honk the horn, when it's going forward, they flash some nice steps and grab irons leading up to the cab. And there's a chain right here to keep you safe. There's plenty of separately applied steps to get up if you need, and sand fill caps. And this door even opens, and that's pretty incredible. Further up, it's got windshield wipers and lighted number boards. There's the main headlight right there. Right there, there's a tag that says horseshoe curve and some other stuff that I can't read because it's too small, but they are real letters. If you got a magnifying glass, you could read it. All the tags on this engine are illegible. They're just really small. Here it says NS and SD70ACE because Norfolk Southern and the model of the engine the number 1854 and this this is Latin and it has something to do with the horseshoe curve it might be the Latin name for the horseshoe curve but I'm not entirely sure because I couldn't find much about it these windows can move and there's the conductor in there on the other side it has the same thing, there's the engineer. And this engine isn't symmetrical. 
this big box. It has some vents on it, and it looks really good. This says, Standard Railroad of the World, which I bet was Pennsylvania's motto for a long time. Here's the Keystone logo and the Norfolk Southern logo with the horse. And it says Pennsylvania in big letters. It looks real good. Below that, there's the fuel tank. It says fuel right there. There's the emergency fuel shutoff button the fuel gauge and the fill cap right there. I don't know what that red dot is, what that's supposed to be, but it's, oh, it's probably an air return. And up here and back here, those are the six wheel trucks. This is the first engine I've ever had that has six wheels in its trucks. And not all of them are powered, but that's so it can go through tighter curves. Going back up again, here's the smokestack on the roof. Very different from the steam engine smokestack. The Nathan P5 air horn and some fans. And if you blow on them in just the right way, they do spin. Then more see-through vents under here. All the vents on this, I think, are see-through. One there, there. These are just too small to be see-through. And you can take this part up to reveal one of the motors with the flywheel on top, that's what that big gray part is, the sound control knob, the Odyssey speed control switch, the run program switch when when you're running it in conventional mode runs as your reverser switch, the smoke on off switch, and the rail sounds on off switch. When it's in RS it's the full rail sounds with the diesel engine sound and all that when it's in signal sounds, it is only the horn and the bell, nothing else. And it is held on by a magnet. It has a tag right there that says, Ownership subject to a security agreement recorded with the Surface Transportation Board. I don't really know exactly what that is, but it's there. More steps, everything's the same as on the front, except there is no plow. And this does move. In real life, that would be to open the coupler. It has some separately applied steps to get up to the roof. The number, 1854. That's not lighted, though. The front is. This says Commemorative Fleet, at Norfolk Southern on it. This is NS for Norfolk Southern. And on the right side of the engine, it's not much different from the left side, but there's a handbrake there that's not on the other side, and there's not a huge box up here, it's just steps down. But there are some boxes down there. I don't know exactly what would be in them, but in real life. And then on this side of the fuel tank, there's air tanks. Underneath the engine, it has four pickup rollers, one on each truck, so the electrical footprint is massive. And the speaker is in the middle in the fuel tank. With that out of the way, let's go see it run. Now we're out on the layout. I'm running it conventionally, so you might be able to notice that when I first start it up, when it's not moving, the cab light won't seem to turn on. But really it is on, it's just really dim because for whatever reason the headlights are always steady probably because they're LED but the cab light depends on how much power you give it from the track if this was running on a fully command control layout then it would always be on normally so let's start her up Here's the horn sound. That's the Nathan P5. It's a real horn. Here's the bell. And if I turn off the lights, you might be able to notice a little bit of light from under the cab. That is a ditch light. That's a big feature of this engine that I don't think they put on the modern ones. This was built in 2009. 
when you're moving, the ditch light still stay on. But only once you get to a certain speed, they turn off. You can turn them on and off on your own if you have a legacy or TMCC remote, but I'm running it conventionally. But I like it the automatic way best anyway. So I'll turn the lights back on. If you blow the horn really short and fast, you'll get crew talk. Pennsylvania Heritage, 1854. The track is clear. Over. Copy that. Cleared out, Bond. 1854, out. So now I'll roll her out. Fan-driven smoke is really cool. Smoke is drifting up out of the vents. So there's the Lionel Legacy Norfolk Southern Pennsylvania Heritage 1854. It's a great engine. If you want to buy yours, they're not in stores anymore, so you'll have to look on the internet. I got mine off of eBay for $460, and I'm definitely happy with it. Worth it. But I'm not going to buy another one for quite a long time. Now, I'm going to try to get a remote. I can probably get one for cheaper on a thing called Goodwill Auctions. If you want to find train stuff for cheap, you can go there. And then maybe some O-scale freight cars, because my O-gauge freight cars are kind of short compared to this engine. So I'll probably get one or two scale freight cars to put behind it, kind of space out the difference. So that'll be the end of this video. If you liked it, leave a like and subscribe for more and ring the bell so you get updates. I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Bye.